Australia's defense transformation is entering a decisive phase. The MQ-28A Ghost Bat, Boeing Australia's homegrown autonomous combat drone, is no longer a prototype confined to test ranges. It now stands at the intersection of strategy, technology, and alliance politics. With an additional $500 million in government funding announced in September 2025, GhostBat has become the centerpiece of Canberra's ambition to build an AI-enabled air power ecosystem under AUKUS Pillar 2. AUKUS is often discussed in the context of nuclear submarines, but its second pillar, technology cooperation, is equally revolutionary. Pillar 2 covers artificial intelligence, autonomous systems, cyber, quantum technologies, and advanced sensors. For Australia, GhostBat is the tangible product of that framework, a system that moves the country from buying capability to co-developing innovation with its allies. The program's progress has become a bellwether for whether AUKUS can deliver results beyond rhetoric. In recent months, Boeing Australia and the Royal Australian Air Force completed a new series of flight demonstrations, validating multi-aircraft teaming between GhostBat, F-35A Lightning II, and E-7A Wedgetail platforms. These tests, conducted months ahead of schedule, proved that GhostBat's autonomous mission management software could coordinate targeting, reconnaissance, and threat evasion without constant human input. The aircraft's modular nose section was swapped mid-mission, showcasing a design intended for rapid payload reconfiguration. These achievements are now feeding directly into the AUKUS Pillar 2 Working Group on Autonomous Teaming Algorithms. The strategic logic is straightforward. For decades, Australia's air power has relied on high-end but limited fleets, fast jets, tanker aircraft, and early warning platforms procured from the US any loss in combat would be hard to replace. GhostBat changes that equation by providing an attritable complement, a lower-cost, semi-expendable aircraft that can absorb risk, expand situational awareness, and extend strike range. In modern conflict, where electronic warfare and massed fires dominate, having autonomous scouts and decoys could decide who sees first and strikes first. Technically, the MQ-28A is about 11 meters long, with a range exceeding 3,500 kilometers and internal bays capable of carrying sensors or light weapons. It can be controlled directly or operate in cooperative autonomy mode, sharing data via encrypted links with manned aircraft. Boeing's AI stack uses reinforcement learning routines trained in digital simulators, allowing the aircraft to adapt to evolving mission parameters. Engineers describe it as a teammate, not a drone, a phrasing that resonates with RAF pilots who now train alongside AI controllers in virtual environments. On the industrial front, construction of the WellCamp facility in Toowoomba, Queensland is accelerating. The site will assemble airframes, integrate payloads, and serve as a hub for AI software testing. Together with existing munitions plants at Mulwalla and Benalla, Victoria, WellCamp forms the nucleus of a sovereign autonomous systems corridor. Officials project hundreds of skilled jobs and potential export revenue once serial production begins. But success depends on sustained funding and a stable supply of imported components, particularly sensors, microprocessors, and advanced composites sourced from U.S. suppliers. This dependency is both strategic and political. Under AUKUS Pillar 2, technology sharing is meant to be smoother than traditional arms export channels. Yet, American lawmakers remain cautious about releasing AI control code and electronic WANIC warfare modules. Canberra must therefore balance its desire for sovereign capability with the reality that the most sensitive software will likely remain US controlled. If technology transfer stalls, GhostBat could risk becoming a screwdriver assembly line, assembled locally but intellectually foreign. Competition is adding another layer of complexity. At the Avalon 2025 Airshow, U.S. defense startup Anduril Industries unveiled its Fury Autonomous Combat Aircraft, 
positioning it as a rival to Ghost Bat. Fury's AI mission brain and modular payload architecture mirror many Ghost Bat concepts, but are already in testing with US Air Force units. Canberra now faces a strategic choice, double down on its domestic program or integrate Anduril's system under OCUS as a parallel line. Either path carries implications for industry policy and alliance dynamics. Despite these uncertainties, Ghost Bat embodies a broader doctrinal shift in Australian air power. The RF's Air Power 2035 roadmap envisions integrated human-machine combat teams, where manned fighters direct swarms of unmanned assets in dispersed, networked formations. Ghost Bat's role is to act as the lead demonstrator, testing how far AI can be trusted to make split-second decisions under threat. Each successful trial brings Australia closer to fielding a combat-ready autonomous squadron by the late 2020s. Still, challenges remain. The aircraft's endurance and survivability in contested electronic environments are unproven. Integrating long-range weapons will require new data link protocols. Training personnel to manage AI teaming at scale will demand a cultural shift within the RAF. Politically, domestic debates over defense spending versus social programs are intensifying. Critics warn that multi-billion dollar investments in untested AI systems could become the next future submarine project, expensive, delayed, and politically toxic. From a geopolitical standpoint, the stakes extend far beyond Canberra. In a region where China is deploying loyal wingman prototypes of its own, the FH-97A and GJ-11, and Japan, South Korea, and India are all racing toward indigenous UCAVs, Australia cannot afford to lag. Ghost Bat, as part of AUKUS Pillar 2, offers both deterrence and influence. Deterrence through credible capability and influence through technological collaboration. A successful program would allow Australia to participate in export consortia, shaping standards for AI safety and interoperability across allied fleets. By 2030, two futures are possible. In the first, Ghost Bat achieves full operational status, with a production line at Wellcamp delivering aircraft for Australia and select partners. The platform becomes a testbed for next-generation AI avionics, turning the country into a regional hub for unmanned combat systems. In the second, the program stalls amid cost overruns and export control bottlenecks, leaving Australia reliant again on imported drones. Which future unfolds will depend on whether AUKUS Pillar 2 can match its ambitions with concrete, timely delivery. Ultimately, the story of Ghost Bat is not merely about a drone, it is about how Australia defines sovereignty in the AI era. The nation that once imported every strategic system is now designing machines capable of thinking, coordinating, and fighting on their own. That leap demands not only engineering excellence, but political will, ethical clarity, and industrial resilience. If Canberra sustains its course, keeping production on schedule, securing technology transfer, and training an AI literate workforce, Ghost Bat could become the prototype for a new kind of alliance warfare, distributed, data-driven, and decisively Australian. The message of Ocus Pillar 2 is simple but profound. Sovereignty in the 21st century is measured not by the number of submarines or tanks, but by the algorithms that guide them. In that contest, Ghost Bat is Australia's opening move, and perhaps its best chance to lead rather than follow in the next revolution of air power.